Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Over the past uh, year, we've been talking about the movie The Lady of Heaven, and it will be released on December 10th, finally. So the question that I wanted to discuss today, and I, instead of discussing a question, I want to highlight a few facts. And the important thing is, this movie will have several type of reactions from across the Muslim spectrum. And each of those reactions will have its own impact. So we need to understand what type of impacts there will be, what type of scenarios we're looking at, and where do we stand today? Where do we want to be and where do we stand today? So that we can understand the scenarios and play the impact back so that we can define our actions over the next week and after the movie is released. That's the goal of this discussion. So let's start with facts. And let's start with things that we know are happening. There are three big categories. First, the movie itself. Second, the historical reality. And the third are the reactions that we'll, uh, we'll see. So from a, full, from a movie perspective, the movie has already been produced and it will be released on the 10th. It has already been shown at different movie festivals. There are concerns by some people about the author of the movie, but more important question is about the integrity of the historical events. And that we'll know once the movie is released. And without knowing that fact, we cannot comment on the movie. However, if the historical facts are right, then who wrote the movie doesn't matter. Then the second one is historical reality itself. There ha there's a side of Islam which has been obscured and hidden for the past 1400 years, especially because of anti-Shia Islamic governments. The period from Ghadir, after the last Hajj of the Prophet, till the death of Sayyidah Fatma Zahra is specifically targeted to not be discussed. And this tumultuous period laid the foundation of differences in Islam that we, to that we, so we see today. Everything from uh, terrorism to uh, like calling each other kafir like all of these things stemmed from that difference that happened in that period and as a fact we know that Muslim unity is paramount and cursing each other's leaders is not the right thing to do which should be avoided should not be done however historical facts cannot be hidden if we were if historical facts were to be hidden, then Allah would have hidden all the ancient stories about Bani Israel, Christianity, uh, Christians, and, and like Firaun and all those uh, people in the Quran. But he did not hide any of the facts. And then the reactions. We know that there will be reactions. There will be reactions where Muslims will be divided between people who will think about ignoring supporting or disowning the movie there will be some counter narrative that will come out and then there will be questions from among the muslims and non-muslims so in summary there is no point in arguing about the facts rather we should think about what are our actions leading up to the movie and what do we do after the movie that is what we should be focusing on and that is how we are going to prepare ourselves for what comes next so in order to define the action let's think about what type of reactions will be coming up across the muslim uh, ummah so let's think let's say there's there are two main groups shias and sunnah there one group will be supporting the movie one group will be keeping quiet there will be a group of people who will be disowning or discrediting the movie and there will be group which will be creating counter propaganda. So what does that mean? So the support aspect, there will be some Shias. If you take from a Shia perspective, there will be some people who will support the movie and its narrative because it is historical reality. It is part of their legacy. There will be people who will neither support nor denounce the movie with reasoning along the lines of Muslim unity. And then there will be Shias who will disown the movie, its author, 
based on its author, its team, and under the banner of Muslim uh, unity. But also they will not only disown the movie, there, are, there might be a minor group of people influenced by the Sunnah versions that these are not historically correct events. On the other side, from the Sunnah perspective, there will be people who will support the movie, very small perspective, who want to learn about what actually happened. There will be a small percentage of people who will keep quiet. There will mostly be people who will discredit the movie based on their long-standing understanding or belief or narrative that these are not authentic hadiths where this movie is coming from and will try to there will be a group which will try to create counter propaganda saying that these events were included to uh, to malign the second and third caliph so if you think about these two groups you put shias in the rows and sunnah in the column there are nine potential scenarios that might emerge how the world sees it and it will this movie will impact the broader questioning of these events. So let's think about these. I'll go from Shia version across and then go one by one from a Sunnah point of view. So if Shias are defending the historical events and Sunnah are also defending, the impact will be the historical atrocities on the household of the Prophet, specifically Sayyid of Fatima Zahra, will be confirmed. If Shias are defending and supporting, but Sunnah are quiet, the historical injustice on the progeny of the Prophet will still be highlighted. And if Shias are defending, but Sunnah are negating the events, there will be arguments, there will be questions, there will be uh, discussion on the early period of history. On the flip side, if Shia remain quiet, but Sunnah defend, historical injustice is highlighted as discussed because it is being defended by the Sunnah side. But both, if both keep quiet, then there's no progress. There is status quo. This movie will be forgotten over time and no justice or discussion will happen on the injustice that happened to Sayyidah Fatima Zahra. And if Shias remain quiet and Sunnah go into their full-fledged disowning, discrediting version, then the Sunnah narrative wins and the historical facts are obscured for a long time. Now, the third extreme is if, if Shias disown and discredit the movie, which is a very low probability, and Sunnah defend the movie, it will create more confusion around the world. Like, why are you doing the opposite? And then if we disown the movie and they keep quiet and we disown the movie, meaning Shias disown the movie and Sunnah negate the movie as well, then essentially the Shia negative narrative negatively impacted for generations. People will be asking, you had an opportunity at that time. Why did Shia remain quiet when they had the opportunity? in a free world with an open communication unlike the time of the Imams or afterwards when they were being slaughtered. The questions will come up and this entire narrative will be badly damaged. So let's look at let's look at from a color coding perspective what I've tried to do over here is highlight on a spectrum from green to red green being the most impactful scenario in which the historical reality and the atrocities on Sayyid Fatima Zahra are highlighted versus red where the history is obscured for a long time. And if you see the top row is an area where historical reality will be supported. The bottom row is an area where historical reality will not be supported. It will be obscured. And to be specific, top left is an area where we want to be but let's look at like okay that is where we want to be but that doesn't mean what is actually happening on the ground today right let's think about where we are i've had a few discussions i've talked to a few people several people and based on my understanding this is kind of how people are being divided 
there is like almost 90% of Shias who will be supporting or keeping quiet about the movie. 10% will be negating or disowning the narrative because of XYZ reasons. Majority of the Sunnah will be discrediting the movie and the historical events. There will be a substantial group of people who will be creating counter propaganda. And then uh, there is a group of people who will be keeping quiet and seeing what comes out. So now if we overlap this, it is pretty apparent that we right now, as of today, are standing on the right side. How it's going to play out is on the right side. Majority of the people will either be quiet from Shia side and from Sunnah side will be negating or will be supporting from the Shia side and Sunnah side will be negating. So that is where we are. Now, in order to move this, so that means where we want to be, we want to be on the top left corner or the top row in order to support the atrocities in order to highlight the atrocities that happened to say the Fatma Zahra and the progeny of the Prophet. Where we are ending up right now is in the middle area where the atrocities will likely be obscure for a long time because we did not, we were not proactive. So what does that mean? We need to move from left to right, from bottom to top. And in order to do that, our key, our behavior is the key. We need to move ourselves from keeping quiet, from negating, to owning and defending the historical reality. We need to neutralize the negativity and highlight the injustices committed to Sayyidah Fatima Zahra Salvatullah. Any other approach, any other approach will negatively impact what we are trying to achieve and will have negative consequences for the long term. So let's think about these consequences. If Shias, let's think about the approaches and like what are the consequences of each of the approach and what are the three personas that I'm thinking about are the Shias, the youth and those who are on the fringe because they are being influenced by non-Muslims or the Sunnah brothers, the Sunnah uh, 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 brothers uh, who are also on the fence, not talking about Wahhabis, extremists, and then the non-Muslims. So if Shia support this and defend this narrative, this historical event, the atrocities on Sayyidah Fatima Zahra, among the Shias, the doubt will be removed. They will move towards clarity. Among the Sunnah, they will keep, they will start asking, oh, what happened? Was there something that is missing in our history? And at least if nothing happens, it will create a hujjah on them that they have to do their own due diligence and they will be answerable to Allah for their own actions. And from non-Muslim perspective, they will ask, hmm, something bad happened at the start of Islam. I should explore more before I'm thinking about Islam. Whereas if we keep quiet, the Shias who are already confused around the fringe will get more confused. Sunnas will say that the Shia narrative is all false and it is confirmed by the lack of Shia voice. And the non-Muslims will ask, did this event actually happen? Is there some standing against the injustice? Is someone standing against the injustice? And then the last one, if we are disowning or discrediting this entire event our own brothers shias will move away because they will say that this is they will be influenced by the sunnah propaganda they're already on the brink and they'll be like these in fact the umar and abu Bakr are the victims and i've heard about it in some of the other uh, youtube videos from the sunnah they will look towards Shias and say, oh, they are disowning 
they should never this was truly fabricated event it never happened in fact it is a part of the jewish conspiracy through ibn sabah because that is their logic if you go back to one of my videos i talk about ibn sabah that they bring up and it was fabricated by him and there's nothing real nothing in real and then lastly from a non-muslim perspective this movie is false and sees the seals the fate of future discussions whoever propagated this message through history was wrong so any option other than defending and supporting historically true event is a non-starter so what does that mean now what do we do now we need to engage with confidence with clarity and the chivalry what i mean by that is we need to know our history we need to have clarity in our arguments we need to be very civil in our discussions so think about from a historical reality perspective the fact is atrocities were committed against sayyida fatima zahra they are a historical fact and are mentioned in both shia and sunna books logical deductions and contextual evidence point to the same conclusion there was some foul play that happened that led to the death of a 18 19 year old lady with four young children within 6 months or 3 months of the death of the prophet what did happen was there any argument there has to be some investigation that needs to be done for those who are on the brink and third for the sake of muslim unity we should do a lot but we should never disown that atrocities happened to the lady of happen for the sake of muslim unity for to except for if it is to protect one's life then you have to can go in taqiyya the second part i would like to highlight is we need to prepare for these discussions the review so in order to do that i've created a compendium of historical references of videos in english urdu arabic from shia and sunna uh, speakers that you can read through and they come with references from different books sunna books that you can read through and understand when what happened what is mentioned and then there is a series of discussions on the logical aspect of this event and the contextual evidence of the murder of sayyid fatima zahra because ultimately what will happen from a historical perspective is sunna will come back and say this is not historically authentic hadith or narration and that is the easiest argument you can give to anything because that simplifies the argument because literally nothing is uh, nothing can stand against that so that's why the question comes from a logical perspective people we need to ask these questions from a logical perspective as well and all the judgment that happens in in legal world and other things are logical deductions not purely historical eyewitness arguments and then the third one uh, the other thing i would like all of you to th- think through or at least learn about are some of the arguments that sunna have made that i've had like 900 1000 tweet plus discussion with multiple people on this movie i've added those in my other blog post on sunna arguments you can read you can listen to it it's a podcast and that will tell you all the potential arguments that will come up you don't have to go through the arguments and learn about these things their arguments and then their answers for the arguments in the same podcast and number 3 there will be questions that will come up so when you're approached with the questions your approach should be polite but assertive in the right and the atrocities that happened on sayyid fatima zahra focus on the historical facts not on the theme of the movie focus on logical deductions not on the theme of the movie then think about timing everyone will ask why now why now why now she has have not publicly discussed this event for 1400 years to support muslim unity 
and also due to the fact that their lives were in danger. But interestingly, time right now is very different. There's freedom in different parts of the world and also there's signs of Allah that are appearing all around us with coronavirus and other things. So why did this idea come now versus previously? Only Allah knows best. And lastly, we should ask our brothers, should anyone follow a companion of the Prophet if there is even an iota of a doubt that they were involved let me repeat even if there is an iota of a doubt that they were involved in the martyrdom of the leader of the ladies of heaven whose anger was the anger of the prophet the mother of the leaders of heaven imam hassan and imam hussein al -Islam, whose ribs were injured and whose unborn son was martyred and you can refer them to the links above if there is a single iota of a doubt, where should one stand? So with that, I'm going to conclude that this is a place, this is a time when we need to be more assertive. We cannot be quiet. We need to, we can, we should not say bad things or curse but we have to defend the historical reality. The injustices that happened to Sayyidah Fatima Zahra, that will only happen when we have a strong understanding. We cannot ignore this topic. It has been ignored for too long. And if we ignore it now, it will be ignored for generations. And we will be the culprits. May Allah help us all. Seven days left. Do your research, be active, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.